Hi guys, my name is Esti. Welcome to Shokaholic. Soup kambing or kambing soup is a spicy broth of mutton soup traditionally made from goat meat that is cut into bite-sized chunks and stewed in spice and then served with hot toasted bread on the side. This dish is an innovation associated with the Indian Muslim community in Singapore. The dish is traditionally made using goat meat. It is only in more recent time this dish has been made from sheep meat. It is believed that the younger the goat, the more tender the meat. Therefore, although mutton's refer to the meat of an older sheep, good kambing soup is actually produced from the meat of a younger goat or sheep. This is a very hearty and aromatic dish. It is one of the popular hawker fare in both Singapore and Malaysia. This dish reminds me a lot about my childhood in Singapore. So, in today's Cook and Chat, I will share with you one funny story when I was a kid and also my childhood memories. First, let's take a look at what are the ingredients we need. I was born in Singapore 1966. I grew up in Katong, off east coast of Singapore. My mom was a strong woman, very passionate about cooking. My dad, a carpenter, whom I never get to know because he passed away when I was five years old. Eventually, my mom became a widow in her early 40s with five kids to bring up and no place to stay. Luckily, my mom has a rich father who is willing to shelter us during those rough times. But I can tell you, our life during the childhood days was never easy because my grandfather has four wives and they all live in the same house. We were all crammed in a small bedroom, a room that was used by workers who used to work for my grandfather. I still remember there was a zinc roof on the kitchen area and we were told to share toilet with the other family members. During that period, we wasn't at all fussy about the living condition, but we felt thankful because at least we had a roof over our head. In order to survive, my mom was forced to work three jobs as a domestic helper. The relationship between my mom and her stepmothers and the extended family was not so smooth because they were looking down on us and sometimes in an extent that they are not so kind. We felt bullied and left out. My poor mom was left to fight the battle alone. Sometimes even her own brother was not able to step out and help her. I felt really sorry for my mom and each time I tried to comfort her, this is what she told me. If you want to be strong, be patient, thoughtful and understanding. Anyone can be rude, but it takes a real strength to be kind and polite. I was very close to my mother. In my world, she was my idol, my hero. She taught me how to find peace and happiness through cooking and never give up. She often encouraged me to try new things. She trained me to speak up for myself. I still remember we were so poor to buy toys. So she gave me some old utensils so that I can practice cooking with the sand from the garden. The most memorable time for me in my childhood is spending quality time with my mom in the kitchen where she taught me how to bake and cook. I remembered myself rushing home from school to watch her cook. She was very strict about recipe and always seek for perfection. My mom's favorite dish was soup kambing, but it was far too expensive for her to buy good meat from the market. I wanted to please her. So I strike a deal with the soup kambing Indian vendor who used to pass by our house every evening. I noticed this Indian vendor often stop outside our house to look at our mango tree from the garden. So I offer him an exchange offer for kambing soup. He thought that that was a brilliant idea. So we agreed on the terms and every day after school, I took a plastic bag to my garden and collect all those fallen mango ready for exchange in the evening. My mom was really happy when I came home with a big tiffin carrier 
full of soup kambing. She said to me, Hey, you're a very smart businesswoman. I think I do have this kind of entrepreneur mind in me. I do not know from my father or from my mom. But it was great fun. Eventually, me and the Indian vendor became good buddy. And every time he saw me passing by his store, he would stop and ask me, Hey, no mango today? I nod because the mango season was over. And you know what he said? He said, Hey, you, come. It's okay lah. You can have this curry first and pay me later lah, okay? I refused his offer, of course, because I think that there isn't any profit from selling soup. And being a vendor is never easy. You have to move from places to places. Besides, I will never take advantage of anyone who is so sweet to me. I felt sorry for those hard-working mobile food vendors during the 70s who spent their whole life making homemade food selling for so little money. To help them out, I often save up my pocket money to buy snacks and food from them instead of eating at the hawker center. On the other hand, being a kid, I was quite naughty too. I ever shopped leaf chewing gum from an Indian sweet vendor who was mean to us. This Indian vendor often chased us away when we tried to make a bargain. So one day, me and my sister decided to boycott him. We knew that he often take a nap in the late afternoon. And that is the only time we can shop deep. Unfortunately, he caught us in action and ran after us until his salon dropped. <laughs> Unfortunately, he knew where we live and came to my mom and told us about our behavior. My mom was very angry with us, so she grounded us from passing by the shop and even stopped giving us pocket money for that whole week. Well, I'm sure everyone has a mischievous moment during childhood. On looking back, I think I did have a wonderful childhood even though we were poor. It's a shame that the new generation cyber kids don't spend time playing outdoor so often anymore. Life was much tougher in the 70s, but we enjoyed much more then, with all our heart, don't you think? And look, the soup are ready, it's time to eat. Feeding time family, Pashuguda. This soup is so amazingly delicious, it's robust and rich in taste. The recipe is very straightforward, only a few things to take note of. Andreas think that I should sell this soup in Sweden. Even my daughter took the second serving without hesitation. I hope you give this recipe a try and post me a picture so that I can put it up in our new Facebook fans page. I want to thank all of you who sent me lovely comments at our new fans page. It was really fun and exciting getting to know you guys. If you have a Facebook account, please feel free to drop by and say hi. I'm including the link of my fan page below so you can get in touch with me. In my next tutorial, I will show you how to make this delicious peanut pancake called Aban Bale, known as Turnover Pancake. This is one of the most popular street food snacks in Brunei, Indonesia and the Malaysia. It is very easy to make and super delicious. I'm sure you will love it. Do not forget to join me on Sunday. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you wish to subscribe, click on the right hand top button to subscribe. Thank you for watching and sharing our video. I look forward to seeing you again on Thursday. Take care.